Hi guys, welcome to one of the long awaited Tale of Four Geeks painting videos. So uh, yeah, I've not done one of these for a while. Um, things have been fairly busy with uh, with uni, with uh, work and everything else, so um, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be getting back into it. I've been promising for a long, long time that I was going to do a video about painting human skin. Uh, it's one of those things a lot of people um, ask ask me about, and it's a, I think it's one of those things a lot of people struggle with. Uh, you tend to have quite a lot of large, flat areas um, that don't necessarily, you know, muscles don't necessarily take heavy washes particularly well. Um, so I think it's something that uh, hopefully you guys will find interesting. Okay, so the models uh, the models we're going to be working with are the uh, the Chaos Marauders that uh, that are down there. The first thing I wanted to show you, which is really important, I mean, I know this is supposed to be a painting video, but um, you can't really start painting until you've prepared your model properly. And I, I know this is something a lot of people don't do. These these Marauder models are notorious for it. It's uh, it's quite an old um, an old set that Games Workshop make, um, and quite often that means that uh, as the moulds get older, that Games Workshop will use. The, the state of the mould deteriorates and that means you get worse mould lines. So uh, the first thing you need to do is clean up your models properly and take away all the mould lines so you can see where the mould line would have been on the back of the arm here. And I've scraped it away with my hobby knife or my file combination. I mean, I've actually missed a bit on the horn there, but I've tried to do my best with the skin, which is uh, the, uh, the bit that I'm going to be showing you today. Um, if it was my own model and I was doing it for myself, I mean, you can see there's a bit of mould slip on the hand there where the fingers don't actually quite match up. Um, that's something you'd have to try and rectify very carefully with a hobby knife by uh, cutting those grooves back into his hands. But um, I, I'm, seeing as I'm just doing a quick video today, I've just done my best. The other thing these Marauder models are famous for is because they're topless from the waist up, the join at the, from the arm to the torso just looks horrendous. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is uh, just to do a very simple bit of um, filling to uh, gap fill those and blend the muscle back, to, back together to make it much a much nicer surface to uh, to paint later on. So I've um, I've ready mixed myself some green stuff already. Uh, you don't need too much, just a, a tiny little bit. So we're going to take a really small amount of green stuff, as I said. Um, roll it into a sausage, lay it onto the model and then using your sculpting tool we're just going to um, just going to wrap that around the the shoulder joint where we want the uh, the green stuff to be tuck it under the armpit okay so now it's on the model you can probably see there's a little bit too much for uh, for what we actually want to do so it's much easier now to use the sharp end of your sculpting tool and scrape away a little bit of the green stuff. So that leaves us with a much uh, a much better amount. You can see the amount that I've sort of just taken off there. Okay. And now it's a case of pushing it to pushing it into the shoulder join and away from say that strap um, so trying to rebuild the muscle using the contours the existing contours of the model you know this this is not complicated you don't need to be a uh, a professional sculptor I haven't got any clue about anatomy so all I'm doing is just copying the existing thing and at this stage you don't need to be rough because I'll show you how to neaten it up in a couple of min a couple of seconds So if we uh, if we look at the back, you can see uh, the contour of the tricep there. Let's try and bear that in mind. Press the green stuff um, away from there. Blend it into the the tricep. Push it down. Make sure you um, say if there's any straps or anything like that. You can use the sharp end of your sculpting tool just to redefine that strap. So all you're doing is just cutting, following the contour of that strap, cutting along the edge. 
so that you've not lost any detail in your model when you fill in the gaps. I'm going to follow that strap all the way around to make sure. Fantastic. So, there we go. It's as simple as that. But, obviously, it looks a little bit rough. So, what I'm going to do, I don't need any complicated uh, tools to smooth this out. I'm just going to lick my finger and use, use my little finger to just blend it in. And you'll find, because your finger's so soft, you can quite easily just rub the green stuff into the um, into the muscles and as long as there's not too much on there I'm just massaging it into the existing contours of the model okay so if I uh, show you the finished effect you can see that you can see the difference between the left shoulder and the right shoulder there um, as you can see it just looks much much better for just having that gap filled you haven't you haven't lost any of your detail uh, you've kept all the muscle definition but looks much more realistic without that great big horrible line across the model. So I'm going to finish these off um, and then I'm going to leave them to cure before I come back and uh, carry on with the, the skin painting part of the video. I'm using um, Vallejo Game Color Extra Opaque and this one is called Heavy Skin Tone. It's basically exactly the same as the old Games Workshop Talon Flesh. Um, I haven't tried the new Games Workshop um, foundation skin skin tone. Don't know what it's like, uh, but I do really like this one. So, um, but basically, what you what you're looking for is um, hopefully you can see it there on the palette. You can see it on top of the lid actually. It's a very um, neutral skin tone. It's not really tanned, but it's not too bright. It's a very medium level of of skin tone. Um, it's not too pink. You find some of the like the old dwarf flesh that GW used to produce was quite pink. Um, it's not too pallid. It's just quite. It's nice and warm. And basically, the point of this is that the reason I use this color in particular is because then you can glaze it, and you can glaze it with different colors to make it more pallid, to make it zombie flesh. You can glaze it with warmer colors if you want to make it dwarf flesh, kind of more red or pink. Um, you can mix it with white if you want a lighter kind of elf skin tone. There's so much you can do. Just And I literally use this one skin tone for anything remotely human flesh tone. It's the only skin colour that I actually bother using. So it's fantastic. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got my number two Windsor & Newton, as you can see, compared to the uh, compared to the model. It's quite a big brush. Um, but there's no reason really when you're just base coating you should be using anything smaller than this. It's sort of the equivalent of a Games Workshop large brush. My water, I don't know if you can see in the background there, it's got a few bubbles on the top. That's because for the type of painting that we're going to be doing, I've mixed I've mixed a uh, one drop of washing up liquid into my paint pot. Now the washing up liquid reduces the the um, the retention of the water. Basically it makes your, if we're using the water to mix our glazes, it makes the glazes flow much better um, and I do recommend that to be honest I've started doing it no matter what painting I'm doing um, I find it it cleans the brushes better and um, like I said it just makes your uh, your paint flow better in general so I'm going to add a little bit of water to this um, to this skin tone just because you always should and then I'm going to um, I'm just going to base coat the model so y you might find it takes a couple of coats to get the um, to get the skin tone flat. Okay, so the first base coat's dry, but uh, as you can see, it's it, it's going to need a uh, another thin coat to. Uh... So I just wanted to show you the difference between uh, a guy who's been base coated with the with the watered down paint once and one who's been done twice. So you can see the one who's had the two coats has got a much much smoother base coat. That is what you're looking for. Okay, so the next uh, the next step now that they're all nicely base coated with a nice even skin tone is um, to wash them with Agrex Earthshade. Now, rather than just what you might normally do is just slapping the paint all over the uh, the models, I'm going to take uh, take a decent sized drop, put it on my wet palette, and mix in some of my water. Bearing in mind this uh, water, so I'm going about two parts water to one part Agrax Earthshade. Uh, bearing in mind this water's got some of the washing up liquid mixed in with it. I'm using a nice big brush. Um, it's not a uh, particularly. It's not one of my fancy Windsor and Newtons, so uh, it doesn't matter that the uh, the wash is getting soaked up into the fer ferrule. It's not going to ruin the brush. And then I'm just going to slap it all over. But because it's nice and watered down, it gives a much more subtle um, 
a much more subtle effect rather than using neat Agrax Earthshade. And that's what you want because it's there's such large flat areas. You don't want really heavy, heavy shading in the recesses. It just looks stupid. There we go. So we'll uh, we'll let that dry and uh, and I'll be back. Okay. So the first wash is dry and uh, now I'm just going to give the model a uh, a quick highlight. So like I said, I mean I'm not going to do loads of levels of complex highlighting or blending or anything like that I'm, uh, I'm just going to do probably two levels of highlights just to pick out the muscle tone and the muscle definition um, and that tends to be what I do especially if I'm doing uh, like my commission work or or not you know if you're not trying to paint to a golden demon standard you don't need anything more than that um, and then that will get me to the base from which I can work and I can I can work on the skin with the glazers um, to go go down different styles and do different routes so um simply all i'm going to be using again is uh is the game color um the game color extra opaque flesh mixed with white and it doesn't matter what flavor of white you're using white's white whether it's games workshop vallejo or whatever uh, i'll just grab the first one i do use i have got games workshop white vallejo white it doesn't make any difference i just grab the first pot that's nearest the shelf um, I'm going to switch to a, uh, a slightly smaller brush now. Um, I'm going to go with a, uh, a Winsor & Newton um, size 1, which is equivalent to a Games Workshop standard brush. I'm going to mix some of that white into, uh, into my flesh colour. Some of this uh, flesh is already watered down, which is great, so I don't need to add too much water to my uh, paint. So you want to start, your first highlight needs to be something similar to what the base coat was, bearing in mind that it's already gone slightly darker due to the uh, the wash. Um, if you make sure your paint is quite diluted, you can see there, there's, um, focus the camera right, it's very subtle and you can build up an effect in, in, with very smooth blending. You need your paint to be this watered down. A good brush, the reason I'm, I'm talking about what brushes I'm using for each of these stages is, is because when it comes to painting skin like this or, or when you want a smooth colour, brushes, the quality of your brushes is everything. The Windsor and Newtons you really can't go wrong. I've heard good things about Rosemary & Co as well. And what you might see is every time the, the brush disappears from the model, it's because I'm sticking it in my mouth. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend that you, uh, you do that, but it does certainly help you get used to the taste of the foundation paints. It does help when you're trying to get these smooth blends, especially if you're trying to paint fast. The other way you can achieve that is to just have a bit of, um, a bit of tissue paper on your knee or whatever and just be taking the taking the paint off the brush on the tissue paper to make sure that you know you've not got a lot of paint on your brush and what you're really doing is just wet blending those highlights in as you paint so there you go as you can see didn't take too long at all I've basically highlighted one side of the torso you can see the difference between the two sides Finish off the hand. So if you're uh, if you're watching this video and you're not sure why I'm putting the highlights where I'm putting them, I uh, encourage you to go back and watch the highlighting video. It was one of the first videos that we did. Uh, just a basic highlighting video. That's that's the technique that I'm using here. There's nothing complex about it. Okay, so we'll um, there's your first highlight done. So add a bit more white to your mix and go again exactly the same techniques but now you're going further towards the edges a sharper highlight I think I'm going to actually go for one more I said two, I lied ok, there you go that took 
a couple of minutes to uh, to do a couple of highlights on the whole model. It's not a long job at all. From that point, that's basically the base that I use for most of my skin. Um, so just to recap, all we did there is a base coat of the um, extra opaque um, heavy skin tone, which is the same as Talon Flesh. We did a, a very watered down wash or glaze of uh, Agrax Earthshade to add some shading. And we've done a couple of la layers of highlighting just by adding white into our base coat. Um, simple as that. So from there, um, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to finish all the rest of the models to that sort of standard and then I can show you using the glazes different technique, different, uh, how different colours and different glazes can give you different effects on your skin. Alright then, we're back with our uh, Marauder. So, the first, uh, the first skin tone I'm going to show you is just a standard, standard skin tone. I'm just going to show you how a few uh, glazes can really bring that skin tone to life. So I'm not going to do any more any more highlighting or any more shading to the model than, than what I've done so far. I'm going to start with um, with a glaze of Caraberg Crimson. It's one of the Games Workshop shades. All the Games Workshop shades are fantastic. Um, it's pretty much the only washes I use because they are that good. So I'm going to go with a 50-50 um, a mix of uh, Caraberg Crimson and water. Now the first thing I'm going to do is apply it to the face on the model. So I'm going to focus on uh, just adding that glaze into the lips and around the nose on the model and into the chin and a little bit into the eyes. Now you can see it's pulled quite badly so I'm going to dry my brush, take all the paint off my brush and suck a little bit of that out. I'm also then going to apply that same glaze to the chest so on, underneath this guy's uh, great big man boobs. And then gently into uh, the recesses on the, in the muscles as well. So I've only glazed into the recesses. I've not glazed the entire model. All I've done is just glazed into those, into those gaps. I'm also going to go into his fingers. And in the uh, in between the tendons in the back of his hands as well. There we go. And there we go. All of a sudden, his skin's looking a lot more vibrant, a lot more realistic. I'm now going to switch to a uh, Drucci Violet, another one of the Games Workshop uh, shades. This one's a, a purple shade. Again, 50-50 mix with water. In fact, probably a little bit more for this one. Maybe something like 75-25. Uh, water to, um, to ink, so this is a bit more diluted. Again, it's pulled quite a lot there, so take the paint off your brush. I just suck the paint off my brush because I'm disgusting. I don't want it too much on his cheeks. I want it to uh, to settle nicely on his eyes. There we go. And I'm going to work that one in in between his fingers as well. A little bit around the muscles, not as much as the red, just a just a little bit. There we go. Hopefully you can uh, you can see that. Just makes the skin look a lot more realistic, a lot more vibrant. Okay, so we'll have a look at a uh, a side by side comparison between the uh, the guy who's had the glazes and the, and one of the guys who hasn't. So as you can see, it's a much more lively skin tone. I personally think it looks a lot better. You could then uh, carry on to do uh, to paint the eyes. Um, you could, you know, you could add more levels of highlighting. But personally, I just think it looks uh, looks more realistic as a as a standard sort of skin tone. Maybe you could tone the red down a little bit. I might have gone a bit overboard. Um, you could uh, mix the red with a bit more water and uh, and glaze it on, make it a bit more subtle. But I just kind of wanted to uh, 
make it a bit more obvious to show the effect. Sometimes these sort of things don't come across well on camera. So, um, yeah. Right, the next one I'm going to do is more of a... Uh, more of like a, a deathly kind of, maybe if, if you wanted to paint kind of a Nurgle Marauder or a zombie sort of flesh, that sort of thing. So again, we're going to start off with our basic guy. Same as before, he's just been um, base coated with Talon flesh, washed with the uh, the diluted Agrax Earthshade and then highlighted up with a little bit of white, a couple of levels of highlighting, nothing uh, nothing particularly spectacular. I'm going to start with Baltan Green, it's one of the shades. Now this time, because I want the whole skin, I'm not just trying to um, trying to add some colour into the muscles. This time I want the, the whole skin to take on a kind of pallid appearance. So I'm going to wash the whole model in a very, very glazed down green. Sorry, very, very watered down green. It should be really subtle. If you did this straight out of the pot, it would just look awful. But because you've w mixed it down, this is probably 75-25 uh, water to wash, so really, really watered down. There you go. So straight away you can see that the greens had the effect of sapping the kind of the redness out of the skin. If you compare it to the guy that we uh, the guy that we did in red, you can really see a, a difference. So that's not it though. If you, uh, if we then use our purple wash, we can uh, we can glaze some purple into some of the areas as well. And it's it's really these techniques really work well if you use a mixture of the washes um, on different areas of the model. So I would go with a uh, go with a purple on the face, particularly the eyes. There we go. So you can build up the effect as much as you want. You can keep going with the green washes. I'm going to uh, I'm going to go with the the purple a little bit more and uh, put some purple into the uh, into the muscle recesses. More around his face. There we go. So now all the glazes are dry. You can sort of see the effect that we've built up. Now one thing you might want to do is. Uh, Go back to your your sharpest highlight, the kind of the lightest uh, the lightest colour that you used, and because you've glazed the skin and kind of dulled the skin down, sometimes it benefits from uh, one more highlight just on the very raised areas. To just put the. Uh, Put the contrast back in. Basically finished. You've got yourself quite a dirty, uh, dirty colour to your thing. Let's compare it to uh, to the guy we did in red. So you can see it's a much less healthy looking skin colour. You've really gone down to quite a pallid, pallid skin tone with the hints of greens and purples in there. Cool. So for the final one, then we'll uh, we'll go for a more um, kind of a dark blue. A lot of people try and achieve this with high elves, and uh, the easiest way to do it is to just start with your standard um, standard paint colour. So this time, we're going to glaze the whole model in blue. We're going to start with we're going to start with uh, Drakenoff Nightshade, and again, the same as we just did with the green, we're going to wash the whole model in this colour. But we're going to water it down again. 75 25 water to wash. Nice and subtle. You're better off going now uh, with the glazing. You're always better off going more watered down and building up the effect. Paint it on, let it dry. If you're batch painting, you won't even know. You know, it's not going to not going to cause you any problems. I'm trying to dry this model in between in between glazes all the time, which is a pain. But if you're batch painting four or five models, by the time, even if you're doing really thin glazes, by the time you get to the last one, uh, the first one's going to be dry, so you can you can just keep glazing and glazing and glazing to build up your effect. You don't want to go for a really heavy wash. Looks far better this way. There we go. So that blue's all dry. Now we're going to do a, a similar thing with the purple. A nice watered down purple. 
Let's cover the whole model in it. So there we go. You could probably keep going, you could probably keep going with another blue. What I'm going to do is, uh, just like I did on the last model, I'm going to go back and uh, touch up my final highlight again. I think this this effect will be much more obvious when he's standing next to his mate. So from left to right, there we've got the standard uh, the standard skin tone that probably a lot of people use. It's just your Talon flesh uh, with a, a watered down wash of um, Agrax Earthshade and highlighted up with white. You could probably leave it there if you wanted to. Uh, that's a very basic uh, skin tone. If you want to go a bit further and make it look a bit more realistic, a bit more vibrant, you can uh, glaze it in with some red. Like I said, that's probably a little bit too much red on that one, but it gives you an idea of how you can uh, make, it, make your skin tone more vibrant. If you want to make a more zombie kind of colour, the third one is maybe what you go for, which is uh, you know using green and purple glazes into the recesses and all over the model. And a purple particularly on the face and in the eye sockets to uh, to really make him look dead or dying, maybe Nurgle or zombified. And then on the right hand side, a much darker, bluey, purpley kind of skin tone. Um, use the glazes to kind of get a get a purple or blue hue to the skin, like you might find on a dark elf or uh, something like that. Okay, so I hope this uh, video was useful. Uh, pretty much just wanted to show you, like I said, how to use the glazes to get different effects on your skin. If you did find it useful, please uh, drop me a message. It's at John underscore Kerr underscore T4G on Twitter. Or you can email us, taylor4geeks at gmail.com. All your feedback's really, really helpful. If there's anything in particular you want to see on the painting videos, if there's any other types of skin that you, uh, you want to see me do, then uh, I could definitely uh, do some more videos. I've got loads of ideas for new stuff that I want to do, but if there's anything in particular you want to see on the, on the painting videos, please do let me know. Thanks very much for watching.